Good evening and welcome to the selection show for the NCAA Cup 2019-20. My name is Jeff Diamond. I am the commissioner of this league. So anyway, today is Monday, November 25th, 2019. And today will be the announcement of the 64 teams that have qualified for this NCAA tournament. And a lot of the nuances will be explained. So anyway, for the past five years, I have been doing NCAA football tournaments with the same format. 64 teams based on their real-life counterparts doing so well in the, in the tournament. And so what I do is I take the real-life teams and, face, and put them in groups. The faster you qualify, the better chance you have a, a high seat and all that. I suggest you go to uh, my YouTube channel, Cutter Historical, that you will see, well, obviously, this is part of the Cutter Historical thing, and look for NCAA Football Cups, because the whole tournament, like, there have been tournament actions and all that, that have been very much huge and all that, that I did run my rounds. So, the 2019-20 tournament, here's how it works. So what I did was throughout the year, using a college football magazine I picked up, um, I basically made sure that each team, write down each team's wins or losses. Now the funny thing is everyone knows that the teams majority play 12 games. So basically what I did was like, you know, a 6-6 six and six team making the tournament didn't seem right. So what I did was I took the football magazine and then I took the teams that were involved in it. And what I did was I practically um did it. well I'll show you I'll give you a bit of a visual visual aid if you will. So anyway you see right here the um football magazine and all that. This is just an example. If you look on the left hand side it's like it's got all the teams in each conference and what the projected standings were and all that. And then what I did was well, there was a team there. I would check, make check and X's, and basically, it. I I tried to pair teams up on their bye weeks within each other to play a game on the NCAA football PS2 system, and basically pick wins or losses. If a team got to seven wins, either on their own merit or six plus the artificial thirteenth game, they would all qualify and all that. All sixty-four teams did have that luxury. They got to seven, either by winning seven of their own games or six plus the famous 13th game. Not like a bowl game, but a 13th game to make it seven out of 13. Make it 50-50. So I know that this week is currently the last big week that a lot of teams will play their 12th and final game. All that. But I managed to get all 64 teams in that way. Um, so anyway, what I did was Give you, keep giving another example here. See here with um, let's see, the Pac-12, for example, as I show you right here. So basically, what happened? What you'll see here is what the what Avalon said was going to be their projected record. What I did for each conference was I practically um, looked at it. If they predicted eight wins for a team with twelve games. Then I basically added numbers and gave them automatic birth. So they projected that four teams, Utah, Washington, Oregon, and Washington State would win eight games during the regular season. So what I did was all the eight win teams they projected were on rec birth. So the Pac-12, for example, got four on rec birth teams at something like the SEC got um, six because there was six maximum. You see, or five or six. So that's what in is. So basically what you have here is there will be some teams with X's with the little numbers. That's the teams that did not qualify. And circles are the teams that that did qualify. So, so I'll flip through each um, conference and specify. So what you have here is the ACC, and I wrote down that five teams were projected to win. So there were five on max births. And as you see here, there were seven teams that qualified for the tournament. The ones in circles are 
Clemson, Wake, Louisville, Virginia, Vatac, Miami, and Pitt. So those teams automatically qualified. Now, some teams in, with X's like North Carolina and Duke and Georgia Tech. Like, like I'll explain the stadium situation later, but they were they could have had a neutral site game, but we'll see what happens. Um, so as you see, the American Conference, um, they got four automatic berths, and there were one, two, three, four, five, six teams that automatic that got in. Uh, Central Florida, Cincy, Temples, SMU, Memphis, and Navy all got in. They got their seven plus their seven. Well, they got their seven. Big Twelve had. Six on max spots, and thankfully they got the six spots out of ten. I thought there were 12 teams in the Big 12. But anyway, they got their six spots. Oklahoma, Texas, Iowa State, Oklahoma State, Baylor, and Kansas State got in. The Big 10 had six on max spots, and they had seven teams qualified through. That being Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, Indiana, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa. Conference USA has um, six, even though there were five on max spots, because they picked five Conference USA teams to win eight games, which was amazing in my mind. But Marshall, Florida Atlantic, Western Kentucky, L Tech, Southern Miss, and UAB got in to the tournament that way. Um, the MAC had three automatic spots given to it, but four teams qualified. Buffalo, Miami of Ohio, Central Michigan, and Western Michigan all qualified. Um, the Mountain West had four automatic spots, but six teams got in. Boise, Air Force, Wyoming, Nevada, Hawaii, and San Diego State got in. Um, Pac-12 had four automatic spots. As I said, six teams got in. Washington, Oregon, Wazoo. Cal, USC, and Utah got in. The SEC had five automatic spots, but they had six teams qualified. Georgia, Florida, Alabama, LSU, A&M, Auburn. And the Sun Belt had three automatic spots, but they got four teams in. App State, Georgia State, Louisiana Lafayette, and Arkansas State. So, yeah, so it adds up to 64. Um, what you don't see is, of course, the independents, like Liberty, BYU, and Notre Dame all got in on that. And I know some teams say, wait a minute, like teams like Missouri, they had seven. Why didn't they in? Well, complicated as it is, it's kind of a tiebreaker situation. Each league had the amount of um, automatic berths, and each league was told that they cannot have more than three wildcard teams in. So practically, the SEC couldn't have 18, more than eight teams in this tournament. So, basically, that's what it is. Now, there's a stadium situation. Now, as in previous years, the first round will be played, like, on, nat on natural stadiums. Not bowl game stadiums, but, like, natural stadiums. I'll give you an example. Like, I'm going to look, I'm going to give you the bracket. This is the bracket that I have devised. And as you can see... Here, no, sorry, let me give you a good example. Okay, here's a good example. UAB against Kansas State. Notice there's an N, right? There's an N right here on UAB and Kansas State. That N means that it's a neutral site. Now, what happened is the better seeded teams, like from 1 to 8, had the choice of hosting the games on their stadiums, and many of them did. But if they didn't fill their stadium was suitable, then the others, then the lower teams got a chance to host. So if you look at this bracket, up close, you'll see some, te you'll see some differences. Um, so yeah. So, so yeah, you'll see like a lot of them with, the black circles means they'll be the host of the first round and the end is neutral site. The only way there's a neutral site is if both stadiums, both teams' stadiums are deemed inadequate or one of them has the problems with hosting a bowl game. Like UAB against Kansas State. I didn't think Kansas State had a decent stadium. UAB probably would have thought yes, but UAB was DQ'd because they have, I believe, the Alabama, 
the Alabama Bowl or something. I don't know what to call it. No, the Papa John's Bowl was at UAB Stadium, which is in Birmingham. So if a bowl game on this list ends up being where there's a a state a, a college playing, then that would disqualify that team. So that's why UAB and Kansas State are playing at a neutral site. So I found out that there were six six neutral site games. Basically, couldn't agree where the stadiums are. Now, I know you can't really read this, but anyway, um. One group had zero, like the Alabama group had no chance, like I found a home for first round playoff games. So if you follow along, um, yeah, I'll just give you the details. So anyway, what we see here is like down the middle, like Bama, Oklahoma State, Iowa, Brigham Young, Michigan, Cincy, Minnesota, and BSU. They will host games. Because they don't really have bowl game tie-ins, so they'll get to, they got first choice. So as you can see, some, some teams that were like the worst of the two teams by seeding got a chance to play in stadiums and all that. So yeah, so that there. In the bottom half, there were only, there was a problem. There were five teams that got to host stadium. Oklahoma, Auburn, Louisville, LSU, and Canada State will get home games. The other three matchups are neutral site. So what I did was I randomly selected a stadium in the video game and see where they put. And of course, you know that any neutral site game has to be in a stadium that the college team is not involved in this. So, for example, if you look at the bottom... You see Utah and Western Michigan. I know technically Utah technically has a decent stadium. Western Michigan probably not, but Utah didn't feel like they would, could host the game on their campus stadium. So what I did was randomly select it, and you see SJ on the, in, in brackets. That means San Jose State. So San Jose State will host the game. So, of course, it'll be a neutral site. Um, App State against Miami of Ohio. Couldn't agree on a stadium, so I randomly picked. And Boston College will host that game because Boston College is not in the tournament. And San Diego State, Virginia, well, San Diego State couldn't host because, you know, Holly Bowl is in San Diego. So they got they got picked New Mexico State. And if you see on the top right with Boise, that Boise is tied in humanitarian, the humanitarian bowl, so Boise couldn't have a home game. And the 16th seed didn't have a chance either. So I randomly picked, and they will play in Syracuse at or at the Carrier Dome. Um, UAB can't stay, as I said, because UAB has a bowl of their own. The Old Miss was picked. And down at the bottom, L Tech versus Buffalo. That's a neutral site game. That's at Texas Tech Stadium at Lub in Lubbock, Texas. So anyway, yeah. Now, you'll probably notice that, why is there two scratched out names? Now, I know Liberty and Georgia State actually did qualify legitimately, but the problem is they're not in the video game. And rather than doing, like, a, a creative team, I decided to randomly select and see if there's any IAA teams, or FCS teams, as they're now called, that could fit, like, that it's not named Georgia State or Liberty. But I randomly selected three times and I didn't get an IAA team. So Ball St so if you look at the top, you see Ball State. So Ball is so Ball State won the lottery to face Boise and and Cal and Cal won like the won the lottery to face Ohio State. So they'll be sixteen seats. And they didn't care about being sixteen seats and all that. Now of course you'll notice in the bracket um, like I read, I wrote down like, well, in the second round, as you see in the margins down here and down here, names of stadiums. So I'll go through the bracket, if you will. Like you see, Independence, the Independence Bowl, the Papa John's Bowl, the Insight Bowl, and the GMAC Bowl. That means that. The second round games, round of 32, will be played at those stadiums. They're deemed round of 32 stadiums, like like tier one of college football bowl games. And then you see down here, you see the Music City Bowl, the uh, Meineke Bowl, the, the Texas Bowl, 
and the Armed Forces Bowl. That's those are going to be second round sites. And then down here you see Humanitarian, Las Vegas, Hawaii, and Emerald. And then you see New Mexico um, Bowl, Sun Bowl, Liberty Bowl, Border City Bowl. Those are the bowl games that will host second round matches. And then on the right hand side of that, or the left, well, and the next side will be round 16 stadiums. These are like tier two co uh, college football games. The Alamo Bowl, the Cap One Bowl, the Holiday Bowl, the Sugar Bowl, the Peach Bowl, the Gator Bowl, the International Bowl, the Outback Bowl. Now, I know a lot of people are probably saying the International Bowl, that's not tier two. True, but because this is a Canadian the guy doing it, I have a little bit of bias. So the Sun Bowl, I feel bad that the Sun Bowl is in the second round, like with the round 32 stadiums. In hindsight, I probably put the Gator, I would probably put the Gator Bowl in the round 32, but the Gator Bowl is a New Year's Day Bowl, so I gotta give it some kind of power. And I think the Gator Bowl is like, what, the third or fourth oldest bowl game in, in existence? So anyway, and then of course you get sectional rounds. The Cotton Bowl, the Orange Bowl, the Rose Bowl, and the Fiesta Bowl. So the Cotton Rose, Fiesta, Sugar, and Rose are in a rotation. Every year, one of those five, one of those five bowl games actually does not get picked to be a quote unquote quarterfinal. And they play in around, they do a round 16 matchup instead. And of course, the final four will be played at EA Stadium in Redwood, California. That's where I've always put them in. I even thought about, you know, whatever bowl doesn't make it, that it should be where, like, the Sugar Bowl should host the Final Four. But, no, guess not. Yeah, I do this every year, so that's a big change and all that. And, of course, you see the seating and all that. So, when they play a second round game, for example, let's give a decent example. Um, because a lot of these stadiums give you a decent... So Wake Forest is a four seat, and you see the money people well, because Wake Forest is in North Carolina. They would play well if they, for example, what if Wake was the twelve seed, the twelve seed, and they actually went on to face the four seed. Wake Forest would get the home game because of them in her home state, so they have the home game. If if a round thirty two game is not in your home state, then the better seeded team gets the home field advantage, if you will. So yeah, so this is set up in a way. Um, so yeah, you see Cal and Ball State. I'll run. I'll run down the um the matchups and all that. So you got the Cotton Bowl bracket. That's the Bama bracket. They're the overall number one seed. So Bama takes on number sixteen Nevada. Indiana takes on Oklahoma State. Baylor will take on Iowa. Central Michigan takes on Brimming Young. Michigan takes on Florida Atlantic. Since he takes on Missouri, no, Wazoo, sorry. That's Washington State. Minnesota takes on Arkansas State, and BSU takes on Miami, Florida. Now you're thinking, BSU, what university are they? Ephraim Cookman? No, that's BCU. No, because for many years I decided to have Canada State, that's my school, and Blue Shirt Underground School. Because I belong to a Facebook group called Blue Shirt Underground Radio, we'll talk about the New York Rangers, so I gave the American, those Americans a chance to form their own team and all that. So every year, BSU and Canada State play a one game play, play one game playoff. The winner is the seven seed in, in, a, in a bracket and the loser is a ten seed. But because our opponent at, for Canada State didn't think their stadium was adequate enough, we had the choice of playing at home, so we are doing that. So as you can see at the bottom, it's Oklahoma versus Western Kentucky, Air Force versus Auburn, Wake versus Louisville, Utah versus Western Michigan, App State, Miami of Ohio, San Diego State, Virginia, LSU, Iowa State, and then us against Navy. And we're the home team because, you know, Navy didn't think their stadium was up to now, there is a rule that no team from the same conference could bump into each other until the round of 16 at the earliest. However, because, however, when I was making the raw, like making the draws for which seed and all that, um, I couldn't put Louisville anywhere except against Wake Forest because 
I filled my 13 seats up in Louisville. I know it's in the ACC, like Wake is. All that. And I am aware that a lot of the stadiums, uh, stadiums have changed and their um, bowl games have changed. Like, you know, the Cap 1 Bowl is not called the Cap 1 Bowl. I don't know what the fuck they call it now. But it's a different bowl game name. But I don't go by names. I go by, by what's in the video game. So, so yeah. So this is, of course, you know, NCAA 11. I'm actually surprised that the International Bowl is in this game because, obviously, the International Bowl hadn't been played for a few years after, well, by 2011. But it is the old, it is the most recent NCAA game for the PS2, so obviously I have to use 11 for stadiums and all that shit. So the Fiesta Bowl brackets, as you can see on the right-hand side, you see Boise versus Ball, Lafayette takes on Pitt, UAB takes on Kansas State. Georgia takes on Fatak. Florida takes on Alaska. Oregon takes on Tampa. Wisconsin takes on Southern Miss. And Central Florida takes on South California, aka USC. And you'll be like, Alaska? How are they? How did they qualify? Well, simple. Because I did, like I usually do, like I created nine teams to fill in for the Sun Belt, the Sun Belt teams in the video game. So I put nine schools in. That's a, so basically what we did was BSU and Canada State automatically qualified, but a third team qualified based on the best the best record throughout a season that is not BSU or Canada State. And Alaska actually had the best mark, so Alaska jumped in. So Alaska automatically qualified. And then you see on the bottom. Right, you see Ohio State taking on Cal, Notre Dame Marshall, Penn State Tam, aka Texas A&M, SMU Hawaii, Louisiana Tech Buffalo, Memphis Washington, Clemson Dakota State, Wyoming Texas. Yeah, everyone says, "Oh, Dakotas." They're not Bettinian. You're right. Dakotas. When I did my season, when I did, yeah, when I did my season, Dakota State actually got in a bowl game. But here's the funny thing: they actually faced us. Canada State in one of the bowl games. If we beat Dakota State, Dakotas would have been de declined a bowl spot. But because Dakotas beat us, they technically earned their way in. So that's why Dakotas is in the tournament. State is in the tournament, like instead of Missouri, for example. So yeah, so there will be a lot of bowl games and all that. Seedings are important in a sense. Um, so, yeah, there will be some um, neutral site games and all that. I'll give you a rundown of, like, I randomly pick what days of the week, people. So, what I usually do is first round is round 64, 32 games. And I'm like, I pick, I go throughout each day of the week and play games. But, of course, you know, 32 divided into 7 is 4.5 something. So, what I did was that... I know Saturday is a big day for college football. So what I'm doing is eight games on Saturday and four for the rest of the week. So I have six days of four games. So that's 24. And then one day of eight, which is this Saturday. Um, so anyway, um, I have a list of, uh, like I did the, um, the days and all that. So next one. So I do four days. So. There will be one that will put, start at noon hour, one will start at 3, one will start at 7, and one will, that will start at 10 o'clock. So, yeah, so they go by both. And each of the four brackets, Fiesta, Cotton, uh, uh, Orange, and Rose, have one game in each bracket each day, except for, of course, Saturday. Every bracket will have two games, so that basically I just fill it in as I go. So, anyway, so the first games will... I always start the first Monday in December. So that's December 2nd. So next Monday, Kansas State will face UAB. That's a neutral site game. Western Michigan will play Utah. That will be a neutral site. Indiana will face Oklahoma State at Oklahoma State. And Buffalo will face Louisiana Tech. On Tuesday, the order will go Wyoming, Texas, Lafayette, Pitt, Miami, Ohio, App State. That will be a neutral site game. And Arkansas State, Minnesota. Wednesday's lineup will be Navy versus Canada, Washington State versus Cincy, Texas A&M against Penn State, and Temple, Oregon. Of course, you know the second team is the home team. Um, the Thursday's games will be Cal versus Ohio State, 
Florida Atlantic versus Michigan, Air Force versus Auburn, and Central Florida versus USC. Friday is Miami versus BSU, Iowa State LSU, Southern Miss Wisconsin, and Memphis Washington. Saturday will be Central Michigan, Iowa, Western Kentucky, Oklahoma, Marshall, Notre Dame, VT versus Georgia, Dakotas versus Clemson, Nevada versus Bama, Ball State versus Boise, and Virginia, San Diego State. And then Sunday, to wrap it up, will be Wake versus Louisville, Alaska versus Florida, Hawaii, SMU, and Central Michigan, BYU. And the round 32 will be four days of four games. So on the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or the 11, 12, 13, 14, there will be four games, each bowl game and all that, and of course each um, bracket will get one bowl game to do. So, for example, Wednesday we'll have the Motor City Bowl, the Las Vegas Bowl, the Insight Bowl, and the Texas Bowl, the games being played there. Uh, Thursday will be Music, Liberty, Humanitarian, GMAC. Friday the 13th will be Papa John's, Armed Forces, New Mexico Bowl, and Emerald Bowl. And Saturday will be Hawaii Bowl, Independence Bowl, Meineke Bowl, Sun Bowl. And then the round of 16 will be Thursday the 19th and Saturday the 21st. So games will be taped that day. Thursday, those Thursday games will be Gator Bowl, Holiday Bowl, Alba Bowl, Outback Bowl. And Saturday will be International, Cap One, Sugar, and Peach in order. And then the quarterfinals will be Boxing Day the 26th. The Cotton Bowl will go first, then the Fiesta Bowl, then the Rose Bowl, then the Orange Bowl. That's how they set up that. The semifinals will go Saturday the 28th, and the finals will be Monday, December the 30th. Now, I don't have the ability to live stream the games, all that from my computer and through my PS2, so obviously not. So what's going to happen is that... You're going to get the games a day late, of course. So the Monday games will be done, and then I have to do the video editing. And then on the Tuesday, you'll see the highlight show of each of the four. So each video will be a highlight show of the four games, or eight, for the Saturday. Basically, day by day and all that. Um. So, yeah, so that's that. Um, what am I forgetting? I'm forgetting something. So, yeah, so... As I said, just check out my other NCAA Cups and all that. Oh, um, a major change. Like, if, you're, if you've seen the 2019 championship things and, you know, all the commentary and all that. Now, what happened is I'm, I have a new computer and I have a new way of recording stuff. I have something called Hot Page Capture, which captures the stuff off my PS2 and all that. Now, of course, it's great. It has all the captures and all that. And it captures the game sound and all that. Of course, you know, the only problem is that you don't get my commentary and all that. And I used to always like to do commentary. But I like the new system because I can actually play them during the day. And at times that is inconvenient because I usually have some strange noise in the background and all that. Like, I live with somebody who has a nasty cough all the time. And it can get into the game and throw me off and all that. So basically what happens is at least the cops will not be broadcast and all that. The only way you'll hear some commentary from me is if it's a lost second Hail Mary game. And it's basically a close game and a fantastic finish, if you will. That I'll record some commentary. Otherwise, you'll just hear, like, you know, Brad Nestler and Lee Corso and all of them talking and all that. I plan to actually play the whole game, like, not really simulate through each quarter, like, I'll give you, like, you'll get the highlights of, like, the, like, the first percent, like, I always do the first procession for both teams, I like to put that, and then, you know, in the second quarter, in the final, like, the two-minute warning in the second quarter, and basically play through that, and then the third quarter, play through the start of the second half, and then the fourth quarter, just do the final two minutes, because it's the most exciting two minutes in sports, if you will. So, you'll probably see that, um, Hopefully, I can get some good highlights and all that for you guys and all that. So, yeah. So, so the big date will be December 30th. I will be giving a premiere, YouTube premiere at 10 Eastern time, 10 p.m. Eastern because the final will be held in the afternoon. So, I'll make it for like 1 o'clock, like play through that. And then, of course, give you the premiere of the highlights and all that. So, yeah. 
So that's basically what you need to know for this tournament. Um, I'll fill you in from time to time. I know I'm not doing a bracket challenge because, you know, I have to put out so many fucking brackets and all that. So anyway, yeah. Um, just a little bit of a side project I did um, recently is that I wrote down, like, what teams were in each tournament and all that. And I found out that there are eight teams in this year's tournament, the 2020 tournament, that have been in every tournament that I've did since 2015. As you see down here, it'll be Ohio State, Michigan, Oklahoma, San Diego State, Clemson, Alabama, Washington, and Iowa. Those eight schools have been in every one of the tournaments since 2015. So they're in their sixth consecutive birth. And you see, like the, like I wrote down, like, how they did in each lap. Ohio State has done decently. They got to the semifinals last year, which was amazing. Michigan has been as far as the quarterfinals one year. Oklahoma had two semifinals appearances, but didn't get to the final, and then they slipped off since. San Diego State has only had one win in the five years combined. Clemson has been to two quarterfinals. Then round 16, then round 32, then they were the darlings last year and won the tournament. Alabama ran 32 quarterfinals, round 32 quarterfinals, and then they got to the finals against Clemson, which they almost won, but they lost by eight. Washington, not really so good in the tournament. And Iowa, it's been to one quarterfinal, but not much since. So, yeah. So, it was, so it's hard to qualify for this tournament. You know, you got, like, certain numbers per conference and all that, and you have to get to seven. The faster you get to seven, the the better seed you get, and all that. So that's what I did this year. So yeah, so let's hope this tournament is a good one, and I hope Canada State can finally win, because they haven't won a game. BSU went on that magical run two years ago, and I'm not letting my BSU friends have all the fucking fun. So anyway, thanks for watching this tune-up video, and let's see if your college can win.